Hi, I'm Mina Malik Hussain and you're watching The Coffee Table. I'm really excited about today's show because we're going to be talking about an issue that's very close to my heart. So joining me today on the sofa is Sonia Rahman, a journalist and a part-time model, and one half <laughs> of the team that set up the Rack Couture last year, Zainab Ali. Hi, Kai. Hi. Thanks for being Hi. on the show. Thank you for having us. Really excited to see both of you. Yes. Thank you and for this is us. my glam squad of so <laughs> <hot> today. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay, so Zainab, tell me, you and your partner Maryam set up the Rack Couture last year. Yes. And why did you do that? Um, so again, because of personal experiences, mm -hmm. me and Maryam have been best friends since college right. and we've been plus size, we've mm -hmm. been curvy, we've been chubby. We've been the girls who used to starve themselves to death yeah. just to fit into the size that was available on general racks. Yeah. So we thought, why not come up with our own rack and have sizes that will make us happy and make us look pretty and beautiful and make us feel, um, you know, um, like normal girls. Because yeah. one of the main dilemmas with plus size women is they feel left out. Quite right. So I think this was a personal experience and personal uh, journey that me and Mariam yeah. had. We thought, why well, might as well just do something for, you know, ourselves, first of all, and then for, you know, other girls like us. So do you guys have a background in fashion design? No, interestingly oh, enough, yeah. uh, me and Maryam, we both have done our um, mass communication. So we were okay. like media students and all. Yeah. Uh, Maryam went on, pursued advertising. She yeah. was the creative director of a lot of advertising agencies. I went ahead and did my MSc in governance and state building. Oh, wow. Uh, and so I was introduced Definitely to... Definitely not fashion. Yes, <laughs> not fashion. But you know what? I was introduced to uh, marginalized um, minorities and, mm -hmm. you know, issues related to that and fashion yeah. has always been a passion for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always loved clothes and I think all girls can relate to that. Um, so I think that was mainly when we sat together we thought might as well just because again you don't really need a degree to understand that fashion and clothing should be for everyone. You don't need to yeah, be yeah. you know intellectually superior. You just need to have common sense where it yeah. says every girl should have the right to feel beautiful and feel comfortable in what she's wearing. And that thing should be available in the market. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it. Oh, well, that, what a great journey. What a great <laughs> start also. Now, Sonia, I know that you have covered the rack and you've been sort of following their journey and you've also modeled for them. Yeah. Looking very beautiful, I might add. <laughs> very beautiful. So tell us something. I'm sure you've researched about this for your pieces as well. Is mm. that, what what is plus size? So basically plus size, um, is defined mm -hmm. as uh, that size of woman or man yeah. uh, that don't fit the conventional ideal size, right. which, uh, which is churned out by big brands mm -hmm. um, uh, in the global arena of fashion. Right. So that's basically what plus size is. Okay, so the, the usual sizing is like 2 to 14 or 16. 16. Yeah, okay, 16. Correct. That's, the, that's the regular one. Yeah. So it's interesting that, that this is an international standard. Absolutely. So it's not one that's been decided by locals, for example. Uh, no, actually, so this is what I was um, saying earlier. Yeah. The size 16 on the rack would not be the same size 16 that Marks and Spencers or another international okay. brand would have. Sure. So oh. the sizing in Pakistan is generally towards the smaller. Um, is it? Yes. So How strange. You no, know, that's very strange. And then yeah. there is no standardized sizing system. Mm. So if you go to brand X, that will yeah. probably fit you but brand Z wouldn't. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. is another main issue. And doesn't that make it even more confusing? Because when you're out shopping and you want to buy yeah, clothes absolutely. and you think you're a 12, but yeah. then you go to another store and then you're a 16 or, or a 14. Yeah. Yes. It's very confusing. You have, uh, that happened to me recently. Um, there's one brand in particular that I love. And I went I went to pick up an eight suit. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, I couldn't breathe. It oh, wasn't no. going. <laughs> it wasn't going fast. Yeah. I was like, "What?" The and like, we've all been there. Yeah, exactly. Then I went to another a place, and I was like, "Oh, great!" You know, I found my size. So it is very confusing, yeah. you know. And then, what's the point of of a size at all? Of that number on a tag, if it's just so yeah. arbitrary that yeah. oh, if you go to this store, you're a twelve, and you're yeah. like, "Wow, yeah. I'm a 12. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll be a perfect fit, but your arms are going to be tight, and you're going to be waddling around like a penguin. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's like it's just our clothes so weird. Being, 
I can imagine. Like, yeah. and are, sometimes you feel like, are, who are designers thinking of when they make these clothes? Yeah, like, you are I a designer think, yeah. and you are wearing an outfit of your own design, which is fabulous, oh, I might say. So much. <laughs> no, wear next time. Thank you. <laughs> so, how do you guys, um, how do you guys come up with sizes? Like, if there is no standard, then so, what do you do? Again, Mina, see, this plus size clothing is something unique and new here in this part of the world. It's mm. not in other parts of the world. Okay. It is standard. It's basic human rights. Right. I should have the size that I wear available in the market for me to pick up any time of the day I want, right? Um, so therefore, they have standardized sizes. Here, we don't. And the reason being, um, because people are thinking of the picture-perfect model that is being glamorized everywhere. The designers mm. are thinking of that silhouette, which is yeah. thin, which is easy to work with. Mm. Uh, for a thin person, if you put on something loose, that's baggy, that's fashion. If it's skin tight, then that's size zero. That's super cool, super sexy. Yeah, yeah. But that's the majority too. of yeah. women do not look like the women in the media, you know? Yes. The real women have curves mm. and flaws and double chin and tundra thighs and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm which is the real woman. And that is why I keep saying we do not design clothes for plus size women only. Mm -hmm. We make clothes for real women, women yeah. with real issues, women with bodies that other women can relate to. And that's why you'll see throughout our campaigns, we've been taking women who are achievers, for instance, one of our models is sitting right here. So we've been taking women who are real, are achievers, yeah. and the idea is to look beyond the size and look beyond this, what she looks like, that's a skill, that's her intellect, that's mm, her achievement mm, in life. Mm. And I think this is what we should focus on. Uh, my problem with sizing in Pakistan is exactly that. It's okay. not standardized. Yeah. So Sonia, you're yeah. a journalist, you're a wordsmith. So how do you see um, people of a certain body shape being described in the media? Um, obviously not in a very positive way. I think over the past couple of years, I think media outlets mm. and journalists and writers and bloggers fashion bloggers yeah. have become sensitized to it, right? Um, and, you know, interestingly, I think this entire notion of uh, the definition of what beauty really is, yes. you know, that's really coming into the fore. Mm. And it's opened up this discussion, hasn't it, Zainab? It and has, perhaps definitely. that's what really inspired you guys to launch your brand. Um, but the fascinating thing is now the way I see it is that you have both ends of the spectrum. Mm. On one end, you still have that typical size zero or double zero, uh, perfect zero? double that zero, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> that perfect ideal, wow. right? And then on the uh, and you know those type of bodies which are yeah. like suited for fourteen or fifteen year old girls, right? And women's bodies are constantly changing, yeah. constantly evolving, yeah. right? And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have um, you have models like Tess Holiday, yes. you know, who yeah. break completely break the mold you know she was on the cover of cosmo I uk she was um and it really opened up the floor and she got a lot of hate yet she got a lot of love for it as well yeah. so it's very fascinating what's happening in fashion these days at least people are talking about uh you know uh that everything like beauty is really anything and everything and in a way i feel like maybe even social media and instagram especially instagram is really helping uh, bring more bodies to the front and all kinds of bodies. Uh, there are um, models with vitiligo, for example. Yes, yes. Right. There are plus size women. There are women who are not depilating, for example. So there's this whole thing about, you know, celebrating your body as it is. And, and Instagram is that sort of instant platform where you can have your photos, you can put them up on your own terms, yeah. and nobody's photoshopping, nobody's retouching. And that's and in fact, coming, speaking of Photoshop, Zainab, do you guys use it much in your shoots? So, um, I think, um, I wouldn't say we use it to, in, you know, sort of... Um, sort of drastically change Yeah, anything. drastically yeah. change Which or is, get rid of the double chin yeah, or yeah. cut down the ties. Which is what course, most uh, fashion glosses yes. do. Because so, yes. it's, you can be a perfectly regular looking person but and then, then you Photoshop airbrush it, yeah. changes everything. Yes. And I think like, even like with... Be younger people, just people, anybody really, who sees those images, they're not real. Yes, they're not real. But they're made to believe and yeah. sell it that way as if they're real. And so yeah. that is the image. And that is the kind of thing when you go out shopping for a clothes, you're like, I'll wear this and I'll look like so and so. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why that is so dangerous. That is why they're selling yeah. an illusion, which is so dangerous. 
uh, for people all around the world. And that's really interesting that you brought up social media and Instagram mm. particularly. Uh, in 2017, France, uh, they passed this law mm. and it stipulated yeah. that uh, any doctored images, fashion images or anything at all that was for public consumption, yeah. if they were doctored and photoshopped in any way at all, they would have to include the text that this image is photoshopped. Wow, like a cigarette warning. Yeah. A cigarette box. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well said, well said. That makes sense. And yeah. um, anyone who would bypass that and mm. would not give credits, uh, would, would not state that, give that text, uh, you know, they would have to pay like over 30,000 euros or whatever, yeah. which is a huge fine. And I wish something was implemented like that in a very big scale because, you know, young people these days, they're seeing these ideals. I mean, we use filters, right? I've now stopped, you know, because <laughs> I, 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 you know, I myself didn't start getting very confused, you know, about physical identity. Is that yeah. me or is this me? It's very strange. That's true. And a lot of body dysmorphia is stemming from these things where even famous people like Jamila Jamil, for example, who started this, she's a British actress and she started this whole yeah. movement yeah. on the internet. And one part of it is called I Way and, and people send in their photos and it's like you are not, you are the sum of so many things. Like yes. I weigh my confidence, I weigh my scars, I weigh my successes, my insecurities, but not a number on a scale. Correct. And she says about her own journey and she's really thin like some of you know when sometimes people yeah, yeah, yeah. see yeah. her and they're she's like, like a perfect well one, like yeah. what's your problem <laughs> honey you know? <laughs> but even she talks about how she used to suffer body dysmorphia right. where that there's a gap between even your yeah. own self yeah. on a magazine cover Absolutely. or in a spread or anywhere really yeah. and what you see in the mirror and I thought that was so um, valuable for even an actress to feel like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like taking off from there, Mina, I mean, I'm sure both of you have seen your pictures from the past. And at that point in time, yeah. you thought, oh my God, I look, I'm fat. I'm fat, yeah. I'm yeah. chubby, yeah, that's or, a typical, yeah. I'm yeah. heavy. But now when you look at those pictures, you think, am I mad? Was I crazy? <laughs> I was perfect then, <laughs> look at me now. That, just, that yeah. just goes to show what an, what an effect media has on us with every passing day. Yes. We've been bombarded with We've these been images. conditioned. Yeah. Of I so guess. much. Which is so So dangerous. much conditioning from such a young age. And I find it so weird because... Especially for Pakistanis, like you said before, Zainab, that we aren't genetically, we aren't that thin. Yeah, we are yeah. thin. It's a Caucasian thing to be exactly. that kind of thin yes. yeah. and to be that kind of like yeah. Kylie Jenner-esque, yeah. any model really, any model yeah. who is white or yeah. Caucasian. That's a complete, it's just genetically different. Like South Asian women... That's just not what we're like. You can Absolutely. you can gym yourself into submission, but Absolutely. the fact is that every, most no, of us are curvy. Yeah. Yes, we are curvy, but you see, it's not just about gymming. It's your bone structure. It's your yeah. genetic makeup. All of yeah. these things make up for your height and the bone and mm -hmm. how you know fat or thin you are. Yeah. So I don't really. I mean, my problem with this entire illusion that the media has created is that people expect this thing in the TV from you know everyone around them. Mm -hmm. Like the girls are pressured into yeah. pretending to be things that they see on TV. And that leads to a lot of problems in addition to mental health issues with women, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Self-imaging and yeah. um, depression. Women are starving and all just to look like what they see on media, you know. That Absolutely. is... Absolutely. That's so, that's so disturbing, but also something that I want to go into, into more detail. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a quick break and uh, see you soon. Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. I'm talking to Zainab Ali and Sonia Rahman about the body and beauty and we're having so much fun. It's good to see you again. <laughs> so Zainab, we were talking about how Desi girls are a certain shape and how not being that shape makes for a lot of insecurity and there's such a gap between what we're being sold as images and also what we're being sold in stores. Yes. Because it's a problem like, it's like you, you at least with me, like if I go into a store and something doesn't fit, the first thing I'll think of is that, well, well, I need to lose a few inches. Yes, yes. Not that the, the problem is with the clothes. Yes. The problem is with me, which is so unfair. Like, why am I the problem? Of course I'm not the problem. <laughs> like, the store is the problem. Like, why is this size 12 not 12? Yes. You know, so I imagine that your clothes address that. Um, yes, so specifically with the rack couture, we make clothes that fit and flaunt the body and mm. its shape. Yeah. So it's individually designed and, and I individually that sized. you're not wearing black. 
which is great. Because yeah, again, I isn't mean, that such a thing? Yes, because you see, there are other colors in the world which are very beautiful and pretty looking, so might as well wear them. See, all of these things come with um, mental constraints that we have. Oh, a fat girl cannot wear yellow. Oh, uh, she should yes. definitely not wear white. I don't care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe this particular cut of arm is not suited yeah, for a yes. fat arm. But you see... Um, I always wear like mm, vertical stripes. Things like that. But if you look at international fashion trends, all of this yeah. is changing. All yeah, of this is true. changing. And it is only a, a problem when it comes to this part of the world where mm. things are just so difficult. Mm to, you know, bring a change around. Isn't, it? yeah. isn't this this endless thing, you know, that <laughs> you are, you're not tall enough, you're not thin enough, you're not fair enough. Like, if you're not yeah. that fair, then you shouldn't wear X color. Yes. Like, like, you can't win. Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand with also society. Like, you know, you have... Uh, this this whole marriage sort of market where they're looking for these perfect bahus, which are unicorns. Yes. You can't have the perfect bahu, <laughs> honey money. <laughs> you know? Where is she? I want to meet her. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and then you have, of course, you know, these images, men are being bombarded with these images. That's also well, true. You know, they themselves, poor little things, get confused. <laughs> like, oh yeah, she should look like this and hair like that. And you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and just because like a tiny percentage of women can look like that. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't mean that now everybody has to sort of jump through that incredibly tiny hoop <laughs> to <laughs> look <laughs> like that. But it's you know like, what? I jump in my <laughs> <talk. laughs> But you know oh what, Sonia, the other day when we were talking yeah. about this, uh, some experiences have been different. I mean, mm. there are men in the world who like curvy women and are yeah, into fuller women. That's true. It's only when the time of mummy ji comes in is <laughs> the problem. <laughs> where that there is are issues so like true. she looks she looks yeah. elder than you or bigger in right. age in terms yeah. of you know or she true. she does she won't uh, fit the. Uh, it does, it's not it's not visually it doesn't look like you're a good <laughs> yeah. couple. Yeah. So you know? I mean, of course, so we have our priorities yeah. set right there that yeah. a couple should visually look good. And we also not compare. Yeah, and we were also talking, Zainab, earlier, we were talking about how guys are very afraid of having, you know, um, a curvy woman, uh, yes. you know, on their side because yes. they want that beautiful Kim Kardashian. Although, hang she on a second. She is curvy. Hang on. Guys, you know what? One thing. I feel yeah. the Kardashians, I used to think, okay, fine, everything goes against them, but at least they're bringing curvy is hot back. That's true. However, That's true. they're bringing implants are hot back. <laughs> and again, the really sort of unrealistic curvy unrealistic. where you're like hourglass. Yeah. I think, it, I think that South Asian girls can be hourglass because yeah. that's still closer yeah. to what our yeah. natural shape is like. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, yeah. but of course, it, no, no thanks. But however, <laughs> then you have the Beyonce's and stuff, right? You yes. have athletes like Serena Williams. You have, mm. you know, these huge brands who are promoting that different kind of beauty. And you it's know? so heartening to see it happening abroad. But even now, even here, when Serena Williams, for example, plays a match, mm. you have a lot of guys on like Pakistani Twitter or Facebook saying not Commenting, great things yeah. about her. Like they think that she looks manly or yeah. that she's like she looks too powerful and that's not a feminine thing. But look at yeah. where it's coming from. It's yeah. Pakistani men. Yeah. So. Or insecure men. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, and it's also so strange that again like in the in the Drishta scene, yeah. for example, which is very prevalent. You can't escape it. It's just yeah. a fact it's just a fact of our culture really. Yeah. But you have moms yeah. who are looking for a certain kind of girl They're for their scouting side. for them. But yeah. It's like you've internalized that idea of beauty yeah. yourself also. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of uh, middle-aged women are not thin. <laughs> you know, I, I, I saw such a really, <laughs> such a hilarious meme the other day. Yeah. Um, and it was like, it was this bride and she was hugging her husband. They just got married. And on top, it was written, great, I can get fat again. Oh, <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> you know, that's how it is. Yeah. You know, you starve yourself, you become completely anorexic, you whittle yourself down to that beautiful ideal. And then you just take the thing off and you become like, <laughs> you know. You just relax, yeah. really. You can just be happy with so, yourself. Again, but that's ridiculous, but that right? From a health point that of view. Yeah. Sad, that is a sad <laughs> life. To starve Absolutely. yourself to yeah. death for a particular event and yeah. then... Now you're happy that you can eat and just live your life. And again, the wonderful. event is also about the clothes. Absolutely. Like the most important thing is yeah. that the event is about your outfit. Oh, God. And your outfit is about your body. Yeah. Like that's really what it all boils down to. And like you said yeah. earlier, dressing a, a very thin body for designers is easy. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and 
it's a very particular kind of aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. So again, it's like the, it's yeah. like the chicken or the egg, really. Absolutely. That do you do you need? Why can't? And if you're having custom clothes, like this is what yeah. I don't understand in a country like Pakistan, where you have tailors, where you have designers, you have access to custom couture. Surely the couture yeah. should then mold you, not the other way around. Not the other way around. Yeah. yeah. But and as somebody who makes couture, like how has the yeah. response been to the rack? It's been amazing, actually. Yeah. Um, so the other day, also I was saying, um, any order that we get on our Instagram or Facebook page, uh, the first paragraph is always, always about women thanking God for having a brand like ours, yeah. which would cater to their bodily um, and you know shape and sizing needs. Do you remember that message I sent? Yes. <laughs> what was it? Tell me. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> okay, Don't can I share that? <laughs> okay. So. Um, the friendship actually started off as a very emotional, uh, <laughs> it started off with a very emotional message. So yeah. Sonia here just ordered a t-shirt from our brand. And I've seen just it, like, it's so nice. <laughs> I hope you do. It says Thank diet you. school dropout. Yeah, diet, diet industry, industry. Diet yeah. industry yeah. dropout. Yeah. Like, yeah, girl. <laughs> so Sonia here, she ordered it just yeah. like any other client. And then as, as any uh, client, we would follow up and ask how it was and what's your feedback on this. Uh, so she sent us a very personalized audio note. Wow, our voice <laughs> note. So embarrassing. Wow, yeah. those, those are real feels. Those are Can real Can we talk feels. about yeah, it? Yeah, sure. And so <laughs> that day, and I keep telling her, that particular day, I was having a bad day. There were a couple of issues back at the workshop, mm -hmm. and the workers weren't very cooperative. And you know how being a woman and just running your own business, people, everyone just wants to, you know, oh, be a rebellion. That's a, that's a against, whole next, yeah. Yeah. next level so, of... <laughs> so then, um, and I was just thinking that this might not be working and I'm losing my sanity, so might as well just end it. And we mm. just it was just the first six months of our company. Uh, and then I get this audio note from Sonia, and uh, in that note, um, she oh was God, all I'm teary so and emotional. Wow. And yeah. the first thing that she mentioned was how she feels after wearing the T-shirt. Mm. She didn't say, I look sexy or I look beautiful. She says, I feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that After for me, they did. You know, that yeah. for me was it. And I thought maybe yeah. if I can bring, if I can do this to one person through a t-shirt, um, then I think I shouldn't stop because I think this is a feeling that all plus size women and women generally who have, you know, just people pinpointing issues that towards them or saying this, this is not good about you or that should be better about you. You know, self-doubting women, I think this is the kind of feeling that I would want to spread all around. Do you want to know the background to... Yes, the... please, can we, can we talk about <laughs> that on TV? Very, you know, <laughs> voice note. So I was going through a bit of a rough patch in 2018 and I mm. became a bit of a homebody and I wasn't mm. leaving the house for quite a while. And I think after a couple of months, I did get out in those few months. Yeah, <laughs> like you did out. <laughs> but I, I didn't really, I wasn't really socializing mm. as such or whatever. And I'd gotten the T-shirt, I think, a month prior. Um, I'd ordered it. And uh, when I, anyway, then I had just, I was like, you know, enough is enough. I have to go out. So um, I had, you know, got in touch with a friend of mine. He was in town, an old college buddy. And I was like, I, w I hadn't meet, met him in like years and years yeah. and years. And I was like, oh my God, what should I wear? So I was like, okay, I'll wear jeans and a T-shirt. And I tried on that T-shirt. And I was going through severe self-esteem issues then, yeah. uh, like majorly. Yeah. And I put on that T-shirt and I actually, I had tears in my eyes. And I was like, bloody hell, it's fitting me so well. <laughs> like, where are my roles? <laughs> I mean, it was amazing. I think, oh my oh, gosh. Sonia, I think that, that it's just, sweet. it's so, um, I think it can't be said enough, really. And yeah. it doesn't, it's really not a frivolous, girly thing. Yeah. That, oh, your clothes, your T-shirt yeah. fit you so nicely. And it was such a big deal for you. Like people, yeah. I don't know if, I, I don't think men, some men might. I'm yeah, just generalizing yeah. here. Yeah. But <laughs> it's 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 sh it's shocking how yeah. how deeply it affects you. It and does. like it's I have shocking. four kids. Yeah. And after I had my second baby, I was like pretty overweight because mm. I just had a baby, you mm, know. And absolutely. And the, and the narrative is also again like even yeah. around childbirth is that oh get your body back. Yes. Oh God. That is a priority oh for everyone coming to meet the exactly. baby. Exactly. So like true. what on earth is get your body back? Like your body yeah. has just din done this monumental thing. <laughs> has carried a freaking baby for nine months. You Thank created you a human being. <laughs> And people, instead of saying to you that, wow, well done, yeah. you have this amazing, powerful, magical body, they're like, God, get back in your jeans. Mm. And it's just shocking. Like, you know, yeah. I was like 20-something when I had my second one, and I was yeah. just like, oh, okay. 
I don't know. And then you know you yeah. go out to get clothes, and the clothes don't look right. Yeah. And it's really like when you when you're talking about feeling really low, because having self-esteem issues. Yeah. Like we've all had self-esteem issues yeah. related yeah. to our body. Yeah. And it's not just that. Oh, you know, you look a certain way. So I'm sure you never had any self-doubt yeah. ever. Absolutely. That's not true. Absolutely. And it's so universal right. for women. Abs- all women experience this Absolutely. at some point or another. Yeah. And, and it's a pity. Sorry to cut no, you off, no. but Meena, you're absolutely right, and it's such a pity that those women or those aunties out in society who criticize young yeah. women for not being the perfect, I mean, they should tap into what they went through. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly, and a lot of them are not mm-hmm. sort of like model figures themselves. I'm yeah. just like, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but my problem with this entire conversation is yeah. manners. See, it's yeah. very. <laughs> It's not a very mannerful thing to do Absolutely. to come to someone and say, "Oh, you put on weight. You need to hit the gym, or yeah. you know, you know yeah, it's things not, like that." Yeah. It's not concern. It doesn't come across yeah. as well-meaning so, yeah. ever. So, like, <laughs> don't ever do it. Yeah. Don't say this to people. <laughs> they know. Yes, you know? they know. And, yeah. and the great thing is that for so many, the sort of body positivity is reaching. It's in a good place, I think, right now. And right. I'm sure you you know better yeah. because you have so many clients as well. Um, that. People are, are perhaps, I hope, becoming increasingly more comfortable with what they look like. Wow, you're so right. Like, do you think that's true? Yeah, I think to a greater right. extent. Uh, but this is happening with the younger generation, yeah. you see. Yeah. And there's a lot of resistance from our senior peers you're so around. So right. Yeah. So that way, that is seen as someone who's lazy. See, uh, one of the mm. questions that we often get is. Oh, you're making clothes for plus-size bodies and uh, you know fat women. Are you supporting healthy, li- unhealthy lifestyle, or are you supporting obesity? Mm. But it's not that. We're just supporting free will. Mm. Quite right, exactly. And you're so supporting lovely. people's yeah. right to dress the way yes. they want to dress. Yeah. And we don't know what people's journeys are like. Absolutely. You know, maybe yeah. they are hitting the gym every day. Yeah. You don't lose weight in like a second. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a magical thing. Yeah. And yeah. maybe they don't want to lose weight. Maybe they're just totally fine the way they are, and they yeah. like themselves. Yes. And why yeah. is that so hard for other people to understand? It's really is that I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. And it's really like interesting this. that you bring that up because I feel like you know now in my 30s, in my mid 30s, I feel like I'm happiest where I am physically yeah. now. I mean, the second person or whatever would be like, oh, okay, she does need to lose some weight. <laughs> I, I do know that. Um, and if I do, inshallah, uh, you know, decide to get onto a health track, it'll be for myself, it'll be to, you know, feel good and yeah. for health, right? Yeah, quite but, right. But well, I, on health, yeah. hold that thought. And we're going to take a quick break and we'll see you in like two minutes. Come back soon. Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. We're still talking to Sonia and Zainab, and it's very nice to see you again. <laughs> so, Sonia, we were talking about health. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was just saying, I feel like I'm, and it's taken a lot of work, right? Mm. I mean, it really, um, I started meditating, I started positive affirmations, mm. really started getting onto a spiritual path because, yeah. and self awareness, primarily it was self awareness. Mm. I wanted to know who I was, yeah. what the hell I was doing with my life. And Usme, and in that body image and uh, your physic, your physicality, has a big role to play in it, right? Exactly. You know, this is yeah. It's it's kind of sort of disingenuous to say that well, your body doesn't matter, your soul does. Well, yeah. yes, yeah, your soul does, but yeah. your body is your connection to the self, the, to the self, and yeah. to the earth, and to the world around you, and like, your perception your first, of the world. This yeah. is your first point of reference. Correct. Well said. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I'm sure, like Zainab, you were saying, you and Mariam, you starved yourselves in college. Same here. When I was 17, I starved myself for, for two months, lost 40 pounds in yeah. 60 days. Wow! And what? apparently, at that time, I was my best self, yeah. and I had, you know, all these people giving me attention. I had my friends telling me I looked gorgeous, mm-hmm. but I was so depressed. And mm-hmm. so, you know, all of us, we've lost weight, put on weight throughout our yeah. lives. But I feel like. At this point, I feel I'm happiest where I'm at, you know, and it's taken a lot of work because you really what happens is you kind of like look at all these images of the, you know, these beauty ideals yeah. and you think, you know what, I'm happy for you, good for you, but I'm happy <laughs> where I'm at. Yeah, like it, can, <laughs> it, can, yeah. it can come from a good place too. Yeah, and maybe absolutely. that's how the sort of aunties are like, mm, you know, beta. Yeah. Ease up on the gulab jam. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're like, well, maybe you're just not happy with yeah. your own 
yourself. And, and you have, have a gulab jamun, auntie. Have a gulab jamun. Exactly. Like, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Live your life. <laughs> but Zainab, we, you, you mentioned uh, making clothes for, I want to say, like, fat people. Yeah. It, and, and this is criticism that you've got. Is that you're kind of encouraging a certain lifestyle? Is that yeah. you're sort of letting, you're telling people that it's okay to be, like, lazy. And I'm doing this yeah. in quotes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we don't know. Absolutely. You don't know if someone's lazy or not lazy yeah. just because they've got like chunky thighs. Because <laughs> of the shape of their body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is hilarious. Yeah, so this is one of the... Um, it. I felt it very unique about how people just assume things, mm. you know. Yeah. What we're selling is an idea that everyone is perfect. Mm. How is that harming anyone in any way, yeah. you know? And, and the idea of having fun with your, with your clothes yes. and, yeah. and being happy in who you are. And in a way, it's, isn't it kind of like socially controlling also mm. to perpetually put women on that path of being, you know, worry about your body and your hair and your face mm. instead of like your mind Correct. and your career. Yeah, so true. And maybe the things that <laughs> matter a lot yes. as well. Yes, yes. So true. Yeah, yeah. And I feel in our part of the world, in South Asia, you know, uh, the entire focus is the physical package. That's it, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know. And, I, you know, look, let's talk about the other side as well. Like you have, there's so many women out there who do look at men and say, no, he's not good enough for me. He's got a tummy. Yeah. Or he's balding or whatever. It does go you know? both ways. It it's not ways. just that beauty so the body is shaming, for women. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The body shaming is both ways. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel particularly for men, like um, men don't talk about their struggles, their issues. I mean, male friends of mine, you know, my sibling, um, so many so many men around me, they really struggle with how they look and how they dress and how they present themselves. And it's very heartbreaking because, you know, they are bound by that whole thing. You don't show emotion, yeah. you know. Or, or that wanting to look good or feel happy with how you look is vanity. Correct. So yeah. for men, you can't be vain, but for women, you have to be super vain. Yeah. <laughs> how does it even work? Yeah, yeah. I think so with men also. Um, it comes to the point where they have to choose between expressing themselves and holding it up like a man. Mm -hmm. like, so one of the reasons they don't come out and talk about body shaming because I talk to a lot of uh, clients and people and a lot of them are men and mm -hmm. a lot of men also send us you know, messages saying thank you because my wife been going through so and so yeah. you know, yeah. issues and now things like this is happening. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is with men, this social construct of them acting all manly is one of the reasons they're not talking about it. But mm -hmm. again, that's not the issue globally. Mm -hmm. You know, men yeah. do have issues with uh, body sizing and shaming and yeah. maintaining and themselves and, yes and yeah. self image and all of that they do have a problem with that and with the west it is okay you know mm. it is okay to be slightly metrosexual and that that's fine mm. but here you can't um, also i think i think i do agree with what you're saying mm. but in this part of the world how a man looks or what mm. he weighs is not the priority. You're right. He will still get a good-looking girl. And a young girl. A range in marriage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the mummy ji will find a good-looking girl yeah. for yeah. no matter how ugly yeah. or average or, you know, however the sun Mediocre. looks like. Mediocre. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they, they don't need to worry about the intellect, the personality, mm. or the way he dresses up, or his family background, just because if he earns enough to sustain the wife. Do you think that's why young divorces are on the rise in this country? I think the problem is that women are, have always been clever, but they are now educated and have now decided to, you know, enough they've had enough. enough. They've had enough. Mm -hmm. So one of the problems why we have a lot of divorces now is because women are done with all the trash coming their way. Mm -hmm. And earlier on, I think, yeah, because earlier on, women used to compromise and there was a notion that only a woman is there to, you know, sacrifice yeah. and compromise and make the house a home. Yeah. Yeah. But now women are like, no way, Jose. Yeah. 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 But sort of coming so back true. to, coming back to like the body, mm -hmm. um, like what do you guys think of the whole notion of the, even the idea of obesity? Because a lot of times uh, you can look overweight, but you're perfectly healthy. Uh, there's this there's this correlation. The assumption is always that thin people are healthy and mm. fat fat people or overweight people are unhealthy. Mm. But a lot of times that's not even true. You know, I really think Zainab, I'll, I'll, I'll let you take over. But I was just thinking right now. You know, what popped it to my mind. Yeah. Like you know, in Hollywood or like films and stuff, you'll always see uh, someone who's slothful and uh, stupid uh, and slow. 
to yeah. be fat, which full of grease stains on his or her vest. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, alone a lazy boy and just yeah. like drinking, you know, cokes and watching TV. Exactly. All day long. So yeah. I think it comes from there as well. And um, what do you think? Yeah, I think again conditioning from the media, mm. stereotyping, and all of that. Uh, that has a major role to play. And of course, um, what we see on media, we yeah. just expect the same from society around it. And this is not how life works. But unfortunately, um, this part of the world is stupid enough to believe that everything that is seen on media, the glamorized part of mm -hmm. it, uh, is just you know true. And that mm -hmm. happens all over the world, really. But I think it's also interesting that so much of this is also tied to how industries work. Yeah. So, um, a size 14 person is not necessarily obese, but but you are made to feel like that's unacceptable yeah. so that yeah. somebody can sell you a diet pill. Yeah. Or so that or lollipops can, or the Kardashians exactly, were. Exactly. Somebody can sell you like a dodgy lollipop. They can send you, they can sell you an appetite suppressant. Oh God. Yeah. They can sort of prey on your insecurities. They can sell yeah. you more makeup. Yeah. You know, for example. Mm. And isn't it so like that sucks? It really does. Like what is it? Capitalism is sort of making us feel bad yeah. so that we buy more things <laughs> yeah. and then making us feel worse so that we buy more things and then things aren't making us happy. Yeah. And it's just so what they've presented to you, absolutely right, Mina, they've presented to you the holy grail of beauty. Mm. No matter how much you claw, claw your way, bleeding and sweating and crying, you'll never really achieve it. And it you just can't you know? do it. It's some people's job is to look a certain way, but absolutely, that's not how... Yeah. And it's not just Pakistanis. It's sort of all over the world people are sort of pushing back at this idea now. Absolutely. Yes, because yeah. the idea is to be unique. See, if you yeah. want to be a clone of something, mm. uh, where is the diversity? See. Yeah. So I think now everyone all around the world, they're just embracing diversity and uniqueness and being okay with themselves and let the other person being okay with what the way they look like or whatever it is that they're wearing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think which is great. And that trend is catching on here in this part of the world. And that is why I keep saying that when I started off with the racketeur, I thought it's either going to be a big hit yeah. mm. or it's going to go down south really yeah. bad. Yeah. But the response of the people is amazing. And so I thought maybe our audience, the younger generation, is maybe ready for the idea and not the older generation so much. So I have high hopes from this part of the world when it comes to, you know, embracing people and diversity and just accepting and letting people be. And sort of celebrating yeah. yourself. And I noticed yeah. that in all your photo shoots, everybody looks really happy. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. everyone is like, yeah. Yeah. smile, <laughs> like humongous smile. Yes. Everyone is having fun. And everyone is looking amazing, yeah. but that's yeah, so feeling great. Good. Yeah, yeah. They do on set. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. We just, we shortlist beautiful, confident, happy girls. And yeah. that is all there is to beauty. You need to be happy. You need to feel happy. Only then you... Do you think men love, curvy, do you think men like curvy women or love, but like curvy women in South? I Has it changing? I definitely love curvy women. Yeah. 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 Well, don't mm. you remember all... And it, Back in the day, yeah. actresses used to be much curvier. Mm. Yeah, even so here true. and across the border. Like when yeah. we were little, all the actresses who were sort of really pretty and really successful yeah. were all really sweet and plump, and they're like sort of you know the round. They have that softness to them. They did, yeah. and now everyone is just like bones and angles. Yeah. Oh my so god, true. yes. And yes. isn't it, it's so sweet and it's such a weird thing. Cut paper that, with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you can like contour the hell out of that. <laughs> Yeah. So like the aesthetic has changed yeah. and, and it's, it's become this sort of cycle of aesthetic has changed, we start looking like that, then mm. you know everybody thinks that's popular and then it just keeps sort of yeah. going. So Zainab, in terms of sort of changing, turning the tide, are most of your clients are younger people? Yes, most of them are yeah. working women, uh, young yeah. adults, um, mid-30s, you know, ages like that. Yeah. Obviously yeah. these are the women who have uh, realized and are okay with themselves. Uh, I think the younger Instagram generation is still busy <laughs> trying to yeah. look like Put that trying to get there trying <laughs> till get they there. realize that this is all you you know just waste of time yeah. and it's very important to realize yeah. your potential. Yeah, so. but it's interesting that there's not a, a lot of the people who buy your clothes are people with maybe independent incomes like they don't have to ask their mother for permission mm, power. to buy your clothes. Yeah. So yeah. You know, maybe their mom might be like, but you can't wear purple. You know, or you can't wear diamantes on the bottom yeah. of your shirt. You can't do that. But you know, having said all of that, of course, I do keep saying that everyone should be allowed and free to choose whatever color yeah. it is that they want to wear. But yes, it is true. When we talk about fashion rules and things like that, there are 
uh, you know, things that you can do to make your silhouette mm -hmm. look slightly slimmer, just color blocking or cuts like that. Yeah. So again, what I'm trying to basically say here is that we do not promote people being fat or having mm. unhealthy lifestyle or just being there. <laughs> what yeah. I'm trying to say is we make clothes that will make you feel beautiful and yeah. will sort of enhance your, you know. And will flatter you. Yeah, so you don't yeah. have to yeah. wear a shapeless sack. Yeah. Because, oh, you know, you're chubby. Yeah. You just so want to wear, wear like this big, big sack. And just cover it all up. Yeah. That's so exactly. funny. Like, so, you know, speaking of which, the potato sack. Yeah. I remember, you know, when that fashion like really hit Pakistan in a big way. You know those <gasps> kameezes? Oh, my oh. God! <laughs> and my mom used to be like, stop wearing those bloody yeah. tents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were tentish. No, they were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, at that point, if you were around, then you could have probably like made us all a smock that was flattering. I don't think they looked good on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they really didn't look good on yeah. anybody. Yeah. Somebody once thought that I was expecting and I was wearing the smock and I was like, <laughs> Oh, no, no, no it's, it's just a smock. <laughs> okay, well, that brings our fascinating and hilarious conversation to an end. And thank you so much, Sonia. And thank you so much, Zainab, for being on the couch with me today. I had a wonderful time talking Same about here. some really important things. And I really <laughs> hope that all of you have learned something very valuable about that. And don't tell people the need to lose weight because they are perfect as they are. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Bye.